Hey everyone. So after reviewing Kresnik yesterday, today we can finally check out Bulwark and the Melodic Mascots. Let's get right into it, right? So in both forms, the base and the Brave Shift Bulwark is basically a D and buffer. Uh, yeah, he has that, or they have that 175x bolting strike attack. It's AoE though, so it's not as useful as you would hope it is. I mean, it's still a strong attack, but I'll explain why it's not really useful in most cases. Still, sprite work, absolutely amazing. One of the best sprites in the game I've seen, especially me personally, I am really liking the uh, base farm. It is such a cool sprite, especially that rainbow. Um, melody notes it's so cool i like it a lot i mean with the black shades the ray band so to speak it's just you can really see how much fun the devs had making making this brave shift it's so cool all right but since i pulled the unit and i got bulwark to ex plus one we can check bulwark out in the game and I will use them in Clash of Worlds because uh, we can easily see all the abilities, especially with the morale unlocks, etc, etc. So let's move into the game. Alright, so let's check out Bulwark in the game with all the passives. And yeah, we'll see what he, or what they actually these are multiple guys, <laughs> what they can or can't do. Uh, I'm using Kairos for this, mainly because we're starting at 100% morale. And yeah, that allows us to do all things with um, Bulwark. So to start right off, as you can see, Bulwark mainly is a morale based unit. We uh, already unlocked all of his cool skills. Now, to start things off, we can only dual cast. Um, there is, if I'm not totally mistaken, a triple cast unlock somewhere down here. Uh, yeah, triple jingle, you have to use Kupu Klang to use um, his triple attack, or triple, which is rather unfortunate because you actually kind of wanna use uh, both morale actions most of the time, but it, it may be worth it too. To delay a, a little bit it entirely depends on your uh, team build and composition right but yeah hurricane harmony one of the best things about uh, bulwark is that this is a 135 percent wind in peril that ability only unlocks when you have a hundred morale meaning this is not available outside of clash of wills which is kind of sad because this ability is crazy strong as you can see right 135 Wind in Peril, Wind Imbue, and a 60% 60, 60 Wind Amp for the entire party. Absolutely crazy. This does so many things that Bards does do. And, well, it, it is roll compression, right? This is um, the arrow cannon from, uh, what's the name, Ferris. This is Bards Brave Shifted LB. That would be the uh, Elemental Imbue. And Bards... 45% amp ability in his Brave Shift, but amped up to crazy levels because it's 60% instead of 45. So with this one ability, Bulwark already cramps up uh, or uh, comp composes two units into one with two different kits. It's, it's crazy good. Another thing, Sacred Symphony unlocks at 80% or more morale which is also super strong. It's a 200% physical magical killer buff to the entire party, a party a demon killer, I should state. And it's also 30% reduced demon uh, damage, which is also great. Cheer up, a 650 um, base value morale increase, which is nice. Um, they also have that instrument break for break gauges, but we don't have that anymore. Uh, breezy beat. It's a 120 wind um, imperil and wind boost for the party. And the imperils on the enemy side, of course, all enemies too, which is cool. Also uh, restores MP for the team, which is very good for this fight in particular. Chocophony is a, or their 75x all enemies. Keep that in mind, which is bad inherently. Um, attack, but yeah, 
it, it's something. I mean, for this boss, it's okay because there is an HP lock, so it's fine. We also have Mowgli Mixtape, which is another morale-based uh, ability, which has a lot of cool things, but none of them are really that interesting. And then there is Chocobo or Choco Stomp, which removes all um, stat, stat breaks, etc. Also deals damage 150x and fills LB gauge, which is cool. And they need this in their Brave Shift more than anything, because the Brave Shift of Bulwark works very similarly to the Brave Shift of Ling with all the killers that cost LB gauge instead of mana. We also have Tempest Tempo, which is again um, roll compression amped up to 11. We've got the 130 wind imperil on this ability. We've got the elemental wind imbue and um, the 45% wind amp. And this is usable outside of Clash of Worlds. This can be used anywhere. And this is crazy good, right? It's just Bards' Brave Shift, Bards' um, Amp ability, and Ferris' um, Arrow Cannon in one ability. It is this slot efficient. It's crazy how good this unit can be in in a corner case such as Clash of Worlds, but also for when using wind teams, basically. I mean, Tempest Tempo is is so such a slot efficient or... Well, ability, efficient ability, it's crazy how good it is. And yeah, other than that, I mean, we've got some LB fill, raid, uh, mirage for the party, um, physical damage reduction, counter for uh, for all allies but the caster. It's good, right? And we also got the uh, jaunty jubilee, which is full HP heal, 85% physical reduction to the uh, to a unit, which would be in this case Behemi, of course, because Behemi takes a huge, huge beating on this fight. But yeah, I mean, it's great. And the sprite is also cool. Now the limit burst, I have not leveled the limit burst, but let me glance over at the wiki real quick. Um, just give me a sec, let's switch to the base form on the wiki. It's 65% HP restore, 35% MP restore for the entire party, 60% general mitigation for the party, and an 8k HP barrier at max level. Mine is not max level, as you can see, so please keep that in mind. Let's switch over to the um, Rockstar Brave Shift with the cool black shades. Um, more of the same, basically, but the difference is... Um, coming right over down here, right? So think, first of all, we have the Frozen Fantasia now, which is basically the wind stuff, but a little bit worse. We still have the 120 wind, uh, the ice in peril. We have ice in view for the party and a 30% ice amp. The, 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 the ice amp is a little bit weaker than Celesis, but it's still very good. We also have the same thing basically for Dark, which is uh, Shadow Serenade. Same thing, different element, which is cool. And uh, yeah, I mean, we have wind in the base form, basically. So Tempest Tempo is still here. We have uh, Muscophony, which is a spirit-based attack, 175x, all enemies, which is kind of sad. Um, and 75% damage reduction, so it does a lot of things, but it requires LP gauge, which is the huge kicker here. It's good because it does not rely on MP, but you need a full LP gauge. The same applies to all the killers, which makes Bulwark somewhat similar to Ling in that regard, because um, where Ling has Human, Machina, Reaper, and Beast, I believe, um, Bulwark has Avian, um, Demon, Fairy, and Plants. So we pretty much have all um, killer types covered with this, if I'm not totally mistaken. So, and it's all full party buffs. We also have, and that, that is one of the upsides of um, uh, Bulwark, is that it's also typed mitigation, which is cool. And uh, depending on the number of avian, fairies, etc. in the party or on the playing field, you also gain a little bit morale. But it's a cool gimmick. I like it. And I will talk about this later in the video. But it's cool. And then we've got Bulwark's theme, which is an 80% spirit break. Um... It's nice. It also unlocks triple, which is cool. And the electric ensemble, which uh, fully heals uh, and restores MP of the entire party, which is really cool. It fills the LB gauge to max. 
I believe. 60 should be max, right? I think so. Yeah, it is max. Um, it really does a lot of things, which are rather cool. So yeah, and the auto cast that unlocks is pretty much a 150 MP restore for the party next turn and on the second turn, meaning you always will have at least 150 MP because the boss cannot drain this because it happens after the boss drains you, which is good, but you need 180 MP to start off. Um, so that is the only issue with this, but it should be fine. So yeah. And that is regarding this. Now the limit burst, mine again is not leveled. So at max level, this is a 350% stat increase, undispellable. It also increased physical accuracy for the entire party by 75%. That is always this case. And the restoration is always the same. So the only thing that's changing is the undispellable 350 at max. Now let's talk about passives real quick. Um, because uh, I do want to stress that um, Bulwark has no chain cap increase. So Bulwark is 4x chain cap. And that is one of the issues I have with him when it comes to damage dealing. Because while the 150, uh, 175x damage ability is cool, keep in mind you need um, 200 more of the um, chain cap increase that would be the helmet the clash helmet and indestructible light however bulwark cannot wear helms he can only wear or they can only wear hats meaning you would have to equip equip helm which is another equipment slot and that is probably not the best option so in terms of damage bulwark is super far behind i did not bother um uh, calculating the damage because it's not going to be any relevant. One of the cool things though is that Bulwark has uh, 150 innate damage towards avians, demons, fairies and plants. Um, coincidentally the four killer types that he, they can buff. And um, if you have their Trustmaster or Super Trustmaster equipped they also have a 5 LB per turn refill. They have guts automatically which is all pretty nice and they have 200 true single weird spirit innately so it is oh they have 10 lb fill per turn they have battle of the band which is also five lb crystals per turn so they do fill a lot of mlb right from the get-go as you can see right here they already have a little bit of lb filled which is cool and um yeah, I mean, Bulwark, I like the unit, I like the kit, and I feel like if you missed out on Ling, this should be your go-to guy. So yeah, that is it for uh, Bulwark's abilities, limit burst, passives. Let's move back to the PowerPoint presentation. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that little sneak peek. Again, being physical killer typed is an advantage, even if the mag it's magic. I like it personally, it's, it's just good. It makes up for a lot more flexibility in killers. So yeah, Trustmaster and Super Trustmaster. The Trustmaster is a materia with 40% uh, spirit and HP, 50% LB fill rate, which is cool, and the additional bonus of sleep at silence resistance, but yeah. It's it's a nice materia for LB fill builds, so I'll give it that. Um, added bonus of uh, status element. It's, it's more of a tank. Um, material, I would say, just because it has um, SPR and HP. Um, maybe useful for a unit such as Shuyu too, but mainly I would say that it's more for tanks. The Super Trust Master is an instrument, one handed instrument, and it has a 180 spirit, 50 MP, which is cool, 50% true single wield spirit which is nice 100 lb fill rate that is all super cool and uh yeah it's a great spirit based weapon i mean for those that can wear instruments at least and the lb fill rate it's it's a nice bonus i like it it's good but hardly usable due to it being an instrument the vision card um it's another one of those cases where i'd say stats are okay but the passives are not and um, as you can see, 90 base defense, 90 base spirit, that's good in all. 
but the passives. I mean, you have to wear an instrument to gain 80% defense and spirit. <sighs> That's not happening. So there is only very, very few units that can wear instruments. And using equip instrument, I believe, is the name of the material. It's mostly not worth it. So this card, it's probably going to be totally useless for most units. And I feel like it's only really good on themselves, if at all. But if I were to use the card, it, it'd be on bulk work, honestly. Too bad the, the animation is cute and all. All right, so let's discuss because you might have noticed they are doing a few things um, that Ling and Bards also do. And mainly what I feel like the super, the, the, the best use is in Clash of Worlds, obviously, because they unlock so many things at 80% or more morale. They unlock Sacred Symphony, which is a 200% party-wide demon killer, physical and magical. At 100% or more morale, they unlock Hurricane Score, which is a 135 win in peril and 60% wind and physical and magic for the entire party for 5 turns. That is absolutely crazy. They also have a 150% on-demand plant fairy demon and avian killer at 15 LB cost, just like Ling has but with different uh, killer types. They also fill morale gauge based on unit types on the field, which I feel like is pretty cool. So if you have a few demon units uh, on the field, you gain more morale. While the morale gain is very little and we it's it's a nice bonus, but I like the intention of that that, it, that you gain bonuses based upon the type of units on the playing field. It's a cool new mechanic. I like it and I hope they keep pursuing this because this might maybe down the line gain a few more bonuses. Like imagine having a 20% damage amp for the team just because your team is consisting of say four to five. Um, demon units, for example. That'd be really cool. And I like the concept of it. It, it, it just adds another layer of depth, would I, which I would like to see. Um, what I also find funny is that where kind of takes away Salas' niche with his 30% Ice Amp and Imbue plus 120 Imperil. The, the Imperil is the kicker here because that is what's missing on Salas' um, kit. While Salas has the better Amplify, Bulkwerk has the Imperil, which kind of makes up for it. And outside of Clash of Worlds, he has that 130 Wind Imperil and 45 Imbue, which is on par and better than Bards because Bards has to use two actions for the same thing. Mainly his... Um, well, actually, Bards has no Imper 130 Imperil, so to speak, right? He has that Imbue, Wind Imbue on his uh, LB and he can single Imbue units or in his base form, but I wouldn't count that. So he has to use two abilities, Brave Shift, uh, LB, Brave Shift, and his Brave Shifted um, cooldown to do both things, Imbue and um, Amplify. Um, Bulwark has that in one ability, which I like. Also, 350% party all stats, which is nice. Aerith does it better, but it's still good. And the kicker here is the 350% stat increase is undispellable, which is super cool. Now, the downside of this is that he does absolutely no damage um, because his real damaging skill, 175x as you've seen, is AoE. And if you're using this for kill turns where you have to do the chaining mission in Dark Visions or Clash of Worlds, that will be an issue because as soon as the boss dies, the, the chain will break mid-cast. Now for this boss in particular, it's fine because uh, Kairos has a, uh, an HP lock at 50%. So this is working for this one specific instance, but in Dark Visions where bosses just fall over, uh, this is going to be an issue. And that is why I feel like if you're using um, Bulwark, you're probably better off using him with Erinis Ring and have him broadcast a single target fire spell, just so you have any kind of chain that does not break just because the boss dies. But all in all, I feel like he's a little bit weaker than Ling, because Ling does a few more things than him or than them, but he certainly is a better Bards in every single regard. And that is, that is something to keep in mind 
because if you want to use a wind team for example in Clash of Worlds, I will never use Bards again because Bulwark does it all better in Clash of Worlds. The 60% amp is so much cooler, especially when you combine this with Ferris. So yeah, buy Bards, it's, you've had a good run, but still Bards is still a good variable option nonetheless. Alright, so how do they fare in the meta? I mean, in Clash of Worlds, amazing unit just like Ling, but without the damage that Ling can put out. So, um, you still won't regret getting um, Bulwark, that's for sure. In Dark Visions, they are super good for their killers, because, uh, uh, but the AoE chain chains, they are going to be an issue. So, again, Arini's Ring is going to be their niche here. On the other hand, they are covering three elements, Dark Wind Ice, which might give them a good spot in Dark Visions regardless. And future um, Clash of Wills also. So yeah, but yeah, all in all, they are mainly a Clash of Wills unit. A unit. Now should you pull? If you missed Ling, and I know many of you did, here's your second chance. And if you miss out again on purpose, I feel like you should have no right to complain anymore because you skipped Ling, you skip Bulwark, I can't help you anymore. It's that easy. So, make a choice, because I feel like Bulwark is going to be one of those units that you will be complaining about me using in the future, because Bulwark is super convenient to use and to have. So yeah, if you miss Ling, go for it. But yeah, again, I do want to stress this, outside Irini's ring, their damage is and the chaining is useless because enemy, all enemy attacks break as soon as the boss dies. Especially with magic attacks. So yeah, messy use for dark with ice stages and dark visions. Due to element flexibility and wide variety of killers. But I feel like still Clash of Wills is their mainstay. And they will have a long longevity that is far longer than that one in dark visions. Amazing off banner uh, too. And a great unit to pull for in general due to... The bloated but useful kit they have. And that is already the end of this video. We don't have anything to discuss regarding damage because I feel like it's not really that necessary. So yeah, thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow for my uh, Clash of Wills videos. I will be continuing up to level 99 and hopefully cap this video. I do have a few ideas I'd like to explore. I haven't really had the time to watch other people's videos, so... It's going to be learning a learning process for me, but we'll see. I'm rather confident to cap this one out until Wednesday or Friday next week. So see you around, see you tomorrow, bye bye.